Welcome to New Zealand Week. We will be giving you top tips on where to go if you're visiting Auckland. And we will be attempting to make a few of the dishes we've had along the way. So let's start the show. Watch it. Welcome to the third and final episode from our special series looking back at our trip to New Zealand. Coming up in this episode, we will be recreating one of the dishes that we enjoyed while we were there. We will be taste testing some of the food and maybe even drink that we brought back with us. No. We will be revealing another top tip and trick that you really need to know when you are in New Zealand. And we will be revealing our number one place to visit if you are planning a trip to Auckland. So, I have a very sweet tooth, don't I, Paul? Do you? I think you do as well. So <laughs> it's just as well that we have got biscuits or cookies on the menu today. Cookies! And we have got two of the best, I think, here. We've got Arnott's Tim Tams. Huh? Or is it just Tim Tam? Tim Tam. It says, original, made with irresistible real chocolate. And I think you can get these in the UK. I, I think I, I might have I've, seen them I've somewhere. certainly seen Tim Tams at some point, And I have seen Arnott's stuff at some point as well. Not recently. And also, what is this? This is Squiggles. Um, this is sort of like a Butterfinger in the U.S. where oh. it is, um, chocolate coated and then there's the crunchiness in the inside. That is what I suddenly came to mind when I saw this right now. And you will notice it says Hokey Pokey and that is the crunchy bits that you get, a bit like a crunchy bar. And it's made by Griffins and that is another one of the big, um, biscuit companies. They also make chit chat. We've got some of those as well, but we're not going to have those today because we want to eat those at home on our own. But to show you, we're going to have a couple of these really good ones here. That we're with, with our coffee. Ah, New Zealand coffee. Yes, look back to the first episode and find out what we're drinking. So we'll start off with a tin tan. And this is the original. I actually thought these were round, but I think, are they square? Yeah, oh, they're, they're little rectangles. square. Little rectangular biscuits. So why don't you have one, oh Paul? Oh my gosh, this is so bad for me. So they are um, sandwich, and then there's like chocolate on the inside, and then it's been dunked in chocolate. Oh wow, it smells nice. Mmm. Mmm. Now, I don't know what the difference between real chocolate and unreal chocolate is. <laughs> All I do know is that when I hold a chocolate biscuit, it melts over my fingers. This reminds me a little bit of uh, like a bourbon, but with a chocolate covered one, if that exists. I think this is a bit too sweet, to be honest. This is really sickening sweet. Mm. And I remember having a lot of these. See? Look. Oh, uh, this is too sweet. Yeah, it's too sweet. Um, We did have other biscuits that we ate. I brought back some Anzac biscuits, and they're really nice. They're like sort of oaty, and you can get those in the UK as well. But I'm not saying it's bad. It's just a bit too sweet. No, I think that there's an abundance of sugar. Mm. And I think that the chocolatiness of it and I think that there might be even some caramel in this because that's what I'm tasting. It tastes really really sweet. Wow. Let's this, see. It tastes really sweet. What are the ingredients? Mm. Milk chocolate, milk solids, cocoa, vegetable oil, various emulsifiers. It tastes really sweet for some reason. Uh, beet red, cocoa powder, salt, baking powder. The emulsifiers maybe made it a lot sweeter. 
Well, I'm going to wash my fingers and then we'll have a squiggle. <sighs> Thank God you didn't hear what I just said over there. Right, okay. Let's open the squiggles. This is crunchy, creamy, hokey pokey flavoured deliciousness. Delicious. Ooh, look. Oh, dear. Look at that. Have one of those. Get your chops round oh that. My oh, gosh. this is so bad. Yeah. It's going to help with the diabetes, isn't it? <laughs> right. So it almost looks like a volcano because look, it's got like a, a little ridge on the top, a little bit poking out. I don't know if you can see that. There you go. So these are both chocolate coated oh, biscuits. Oh, oh God. I thought I broke my tooth. Mmm, it's quite nice. This tastes like a Butterfinger from the US. So it's biscuit topped with hokey pokey flavored creme sprinkled with hokey pokey pieces mm. and covered in milk chocolate with yellow colored chocolate squiggles and it nearly got my tooth i'm a bit worried about this to be honest you can't eat more than one of these because it's going to put me into like a, a coma no it's like really really sickening mm. it's oh too God. sweet it is too sweet and i'll never say that about a biscuit <laughs> but this is too sweet limey gosh so if you've been offered a hokey pokey or just have one Tim Tam biscuit from us, well, I was just gonna say just just have one from us. It, it's because we're not being generous and kind. Mm. It's just too sweet to eat oh them all. God. I mean, you have to be careful with your teeth. I know. I could rip the filling out or something like that. Get on your bike. It's time to subscribe to It's Paul and Marcus on YouTube. Well, while Paul is preparing the last bit of food and drink, because we need something to wash those biscuits down with, so you prepare what you've got there, and we shall meet today's special guest. And this is a lovely sheep that we got from, what was the shop called, Global? I think it was called Global, wasn't it? And um, did you know that there are five times as many sheep in New Zealand as there are humans? Yes, that is very, very true. I knew that. So this lovely sheep was designed, marketed and imported by a company called Halifax, which is an original New Zealand brand. And it's part of the Kiwi and Friends group. What a lovely sheep you are. Are you ready, Paul? Oh gosh, I need a drink. Oh, it looks like we got one. What is this? This is Thompson's. Thompson's what? A whiskey. Mmm. I so we bought this from. Well, they had this at the the mini hotel. bar. This was in the mini bar. There were two of these. Mini bar in the hotel. And you bought them. Um, I we said, didn't, yeah. um, yes, I am buying two of these. Yeah. So it's Manuka Wood Smoke. And it is it's made of Manuka honey, maybe? Yeah, 46% ABV. Which is quite strong. I took most of I it. I didn't know we were having all of it, but I suppose there's I not really should. that much. But 50 mil. So a 25 mil is one shot, really, is it? Uh, is, is that one one measure, really? Yeah. Is that a normal measure, 25 mil? Shouldn't it be 50? Yeah, maybe. What? Do you want more? No, I don't want more. <laughs> but anyway, thank you for asking. Smell it. It's, are there any legs to it? Ah, right. Yes, there are. Legs are when you see the bits of like liquid clinging. sticking. Yeah, clinging to the glass. And I'm not sure if you can pick it up there. I don't but... think you could pick it up from this one. Oh, God. <laughs> it's gone all over me now. Oh, okay, I'm going to move my sheep out of the way. I don't want to cut it in whiskey. So this opens up the drink. So now... Hey, you nearly got it on me. I know, I'm sorry. So this opens up the drink. Now let's take a... A swig. Thing. It opens up the drink. Now let's take a swig. Oh! That tastes stronger than it smells. You know, this tastes sort of like the... PD whiskies that they have in yes. the Highlands of Scotland, like the island ones. Ah, 
So does that fit in with the glass that I'm using, which is Loch Lomond? Mm. That's a, well, that's a Lomond. Lomond? Yeah. It's like south of... Um, it's north of uh, Glasgow. Yeah. Yeah. But south of Fort William. So how would you rate this? Strong. 46%, uh, yes. 46%? Yeah, is that what 40. you said? Yeah, it's 46. It is strong. And but when I when I smell of whiskey, sometimes I I, I immediately <laughs> you know the eyes roll back into the back of my head. Like, oh. Yeah, I, I did. This one didn't do that. But when I that's why I took. I thought I'm just going to take a swig of this. But actually, there's quite a burning sensation still in my throat, and I haven't taken any more. Maybe I should add a drop or two of water to this. What do you think? Would that open it up a bit, or you could? You but I'm gonna have it. Neat. Mm, well, you might be having mine neat as well. I'll have another little bit. I'm not sure I could, if I could finish this. Oh. It is quite nice, though. I think this is comparable to the ones that we have in Scotland. Ooh. So I do like this. Too strong for me. Like sands through the hourglass, so are the days of our lives. So please subscribe. first day in New Zealand we went to a New World supermarket and just to have a look around to see what there was and one of the things that caught my eye of course was something sweet and it was called a slice and basically it is like different types of like sliced biscuits if you like um, but big sort of triangular ones that they sold individually and they came in various flavours. Ginger seemed to be a popular one and raspberry was as well. So I thought, I'm gonna to try to recreate one of these at home. So I went on my phone and I looked up some recipes and discovered this one from foodlovers.co.nz for a no-bake caramel slice. And I thought, well, no-bake, that sounds good to me. So basically I thought, do we have any of the ingredients that we brought back from New Zealand? And we actually do. Um, we've got New Zealand butter, which goes into the recipe. And we've also got some malt biscuits, which will come later on. But the first stage is to melt the butter. So to do that, we've got quite a large pan here, saucepan, because we're going to be using this to dump all the ingredients in. So let's get the heat going there. And this New Zealand butter, we actually got it at the Sky Tower and it was half price. It wasn't out of date or anything. I think they just wanted to uh, sell it off. But we did see it later on at a full price and it was even no. more expensive than the original price at the Sky Tower from what I remember. So this is pure New Zealand butter. Which, which, which was ambient. Oh, it was. It was in, it was in an airtight tin. Now, just which in is case you very want to weird. know the... <laughs> actual amounts we're using we're using 125 grams but of course it doesn't have Lower. to be uh, New Zealand butter any butter will do okay so we don't want it to burn yes let's get more light on the matter <laughs> we'll get stirring here so how long do you do this for this bit until it melts until it melts and then the next stage is going to be absolutely delicious because I've smelt mm. what is coming in next. <laughs> so just while this is melting, I will tell you what the next ingredient is. And I didn't even know that we could get this over here, but we found it in Tesco. They're not paying me for this, but I was delighted that they sold it. And this is caramel condensed milk. Oh my and, God. Oh my God. And oh. if you've ever had a banoffee pie, this is what you would use because they actually have on the recipe on the the tin a recipe for uh banoffee pie as well so the tin was 337 grams i think and we are going to be using 200 grams so we do oh. have some left over which i put back into the fridge and we might make something else with that because i'm not going to let this go to waste so the butter has almost completely 
melt it now. So this is the last couple of little stubborn bits which just don't want to go. Come on. It's fine, it is gonna melt. Well, it will, but I don't want any lumpy bits at all. So I want it all to disappear and let's see what it has now. Okay, so we'll add this in. Now what? Well, what now we want to do is to get this all condensed into, oh. condensed, get it into a nice sort of smooth paste. But there's one thing I have to do first. Mmm. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Okay, let's turn Lower it. the heat down just a little bit here. Because it's going to burn otherwise. But we don't want it to burn. We want to get this all nicely stirred again. Maybe a little bit more heat. It seems to have gone, <laughs> almost gone off. But it's said to create this into a smooth paste. Do you need a whisk for this? No, just stir it. All get right. it all going. Because it was quite gloopy. Regular condensed milk to me doesn't seem that thick for some reason. Um, maybe I'm thinking of, there's two different types, oh, evaporated milk. That's the one I'm thinking of. Oh, right. But look, it is all coming together. So we just don't want to have lumps in it. And I can still see around the edges, it looks more buttery. So maybe we'll just go like this. Get it all nicely mixed together. Oh, it's splashed out there. I don't want it to go over my apron. I think that's okay. So we'll take that off the heat for now, but it will go back on again because now we have to go to the next stage. Okay, the next bit we have to blitz our biscuits and it's said to use 250 grams of malt biscuits. And these are Griffin's Super Wine, a crunchy, crispy classic. And I believe these are malt biscuits. We picked these up in New Zealand. Griffin's is one of the big name makes over there, big brands. It says that rumor has it that these bickies are named after the wine barrels bakers <laughs> used to store flour in. So rather than just eat them all, why not use them in this recipe? So we've got our, our blitzer here. You should probably break them up into like Bits, maybe? I think they're broken a bit. Already. Oh, oh, is it? And these are malt biscuits, definitely, because you get similar ones in the UK. Mm. So do you think that's okay, like that? Yeah. Maybe break them up into fours, or well, or half. Halves, I think, they're all right. Just the last few bits now, and I must admit, we did eat one. I had two. Oh, did you? Well, so it's slightly less than... 250 <laughs> grams now. Let's just get the last few crumbs I don't think in. that will make much of a difference. No. Okay, put that to the side. Oh, better not forget this bit. And you must say that to always have it turned off before. Oh yes, because you don't want to blitz your hand. <laughs> no. Right, okay, so that's there, like that. That's on. Do I hold this like this? You just turn it to the one. I think that looks about right to me. Make sure we turn this off <laughs> like that. Now we'll go back to our mixture. And I don't think we actually do have to heat it up again. Or should I? Maybe maybe I should, do you think? Yeah. Yeah, just to get because it all. I think that it's starting to separate. Oh, it's starting to separate. Oh, what do we yeah. separate? All right, so we'll right. heat this up. Now in the meantime, I have lined a tin here and I didn't put any butter on it or anything. Paul said really? no. I don't Should think we? so. Well, this this is grease proof yeah. anyway. And because it's not being baked, if it was just left with the butter on the bottom, then it would be a bit soggy. Because this does contain butter as it is. So oh, yeah. It should be fine. Okay, so let's get this back up to its creamy <laughs> uh, texture. And then we will add the biscuits and the desiccated coconut here. We've got one cup of desiccated coconut. Oh God, it's turning. Okay, maybe we'll oh. turn it off. How do I get this off? It's turning into toffee. How do I, how do I open this? You, you move it. It's gonna, it's, it's gonna spoil. 
Okay, jeez. Uh. Oh my God. We have to be quick. This is turning into, into toffee. <laughs> right, okay. So we'll go. Oh my God. No health and safety here. Right, get that in. Get the coconut in. Oh my God. Right, I have to be very quick now. Maybe we turn off the heat. The heat is off. Oh, right. I think the heat is on actually now to get this ready. Okay, we're all right, but I just had this moment <laughs> of fear. I thought, oh my God, it's turning into toffee. Would that have been really bad? If well, it it, well, yes, because it, it would turn hard. Okay, now I need a spoon. I need a spoon because there's something very oh important. God. Can you calm down? I have to do. You know, I have to take a taste of this. Mm. Is it hot? Mmm. Oh my God. What? Oh my God, that's to die for. You almost had a heart wow. attack there. <laughs> so well after eating this, look at it. Oh my God, this looks really bad for me. Okay. Now we just put this into the the tin. Look at this and it's actually coming out. Look at that and just, it's so smooth. Because of all that butter. <laughs> oh, is that what it is? Ooh, it's oozing. And you there might be- save some for yourself. Well, there's a little bit left on the spoon from me. Okay, so we flatten this. And you might need to like... I think Paul's just bringing a spoon out because he wants a bit too. I don't want any, jeez. Wow, look at that. So this now goes into the fridge for an hour or maybe slightly more uh, to harden because it does look as though it is quite soft. I don't know if I over egged the butter or something. Um, but, oh my God, look at this. We're, we're on. Well, I discovered something just after I put it into the fridge that we had this flat tray. And I thought this is going to be so much better because <laughs> you can spread it out more. I didn't even know that we had this. So I've lined it with the um, parchment. parchment paper. And I'm going to spread this out now quite thin. Yeah. Because it will set quicker. And wow, I didn't even know we had this tray. So there you go. But look at that. Wow. And when we did transfer it, I wasn't going to film it. And I thought, oh, well, let's, let's just do it anyway. I thought I'd just show you the end result. But when we transferred it, it just literally just plopped right out. It was so smooth. So now I will put this into the fridge. <laughs> it's so warm. Well, our slice is in the fridge and we give it a little feel and it seems to be almost set. So the final stage is to put some lovely caramel milk chocolate over the top of it. But, and this is a really good thing, if you've been in the kitchen all day, you're stressed out, you've been cooking, baking, whatever, you want to get rid of a little bit of that aggression. This is how you do it. I've got a lovely mallet here, and what I want to do is to break this bar of chocolate into chunks, first of all. So I'm basically just gonna go like this. I haven't opened the packet. Now, you must never um, melt chocolate. Well, and this is a specific kind, um, straight in a saucepan, because it'll stick. So what you do is you get some water, boil it up, and then bring it back to the boil again in a saucepan. And then you place your glass bowl over the top because you don't really want to get the water splashing into it. Um, so that's, that's the reason for that. So we'll let that heat up. And in the meantime, we'll open up this bar of chocolate. Do you know, I wanna eat some of this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna well, have any of it. It's not broken up that much. Can't you just put, you have them. Mm. You could just put it in and it, it is starting. God, how tough is this chocolate? <laughs> it's really tough. Very strange. Now, let me get a wooden spoon as well. It is boiling. Okay, so let's break it in. Because it was supposed to like break it into manageable pieces, but does it matter? Maybe if the chocolate was in the fridge or something, yeah. so it was stone cold. But then it would take longer to 
to no. melt. So I don't know what the answer is. Do we need to add any other additional flavors to this? Um, no, you could add, there was something in the recipe that we didn't have, um, and I can't remember what it was, so I don't think it's necessary. Oh look, it's melting already. Yeah. So the recipe did actually call for two and a half bars of this, and <laughs> when we bought it, I was so excited just to see it, I only got the one. So there may not be a huge amount of chocolate on the top. But hey, if you're counting the calories, uh, it does reduce the sugar content. I won't be having bit. any of this. So I'm going to let this melt. Paul's going to then go into the fridge while I'm doing this and he's going to bring out our slice. So we don't want any lumps left at all. We don't want any water getting in, so I'm just going to turn that off now completely because there's enough heat. To continue. Yeah. So have this last little bit. And we don't want the chocolate to set again either. So we do have to be relatively quick Isn't about this. So I'm going to move this out of the way. You might need to like hold this, right? And look, there is a bit of butter has oozed out, but this, this has set. You might need to hold this, right? Is it hot? Uh, I think I'm okay. So I'm just going to like dish this out here like this. If there's any left in the bowl, you know what I'm going to do. Yep. I think that's good no enough. Stuff. Okay, I was going to eat that bit. Well, you are going to be eating all of this because I'm not having any of this. And then we get our spatula. I think this is enough actually. Maybe. And you just spread it over like this. Oh, wow. Are you sure you haven't done this before? <laughs> oh, I have as a child. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, as a child, I used to do this sort of thing all the time. So spread it all over. Maybe some more down here. Do we need to put it back into the fridge? Yes, we do. But first of all, what we want to do, we're going to let it set just at room temperature just for a few minutes and the next stage then is to cut them into slices and then put it back in the fridge to set properly but in the meantime yes you yeah. go for that let's try a bit of this oh gosh oh god it actually tastes even sweeter than oh that. no oh god no i can't i can't right now it's time to cut our slice and you can cut them into whatever size that you like. So I'm just wondering what way should I do this? Cut it down the middle. Should I go that way? <laughs> that way? I'm this not way, eating this way. I think any I'm going to go. Oh, you're not? No, I can't. Oh, it's quite easy to cut into. Oh, really? And the thing is, it's going to go back into the fridge again. So it would be more difficult to cut through mm. at that stage. But oh, yeah. Has it set now, the chocolate? Well, it's not completely set. We didn't want it to be completely set. Did no, it, set it just a little bit. Yeah, it's just if it, if it was runny, then it would just go down into the gaps. You see, at least I think I think that's the idea behind it. Uh, maybe here. They don't all have to be the same size. You're not eating any of it. Am I going? Oh I'm my, not eating it. Am I no, going to have to eat all of this? Um. I have diabetes. I might just have to share it around. I have no diabetes. Mm. Oh, look at this. Wow. I think that the caramel would make it too sweet for me. I'm actually thinking these slices are probably too big. Like this. But mm. this is the kind of size that they wear. They were kind of like um, triangle shaped. They were triangle but shaped, but I don't think you're I'd be making able to do it, that. But you are making it your own. Yeah, there we are. I'm so tempted just to eat a bit of that now, but I mustn't. Do you want to? No, I'm going to put it back into the fridge for, well, basically for as long. One to two uh, hours? Maybe at least a couple of hours, I think. And then I'll have it with a cup of tea or maybe even a coffee later on. Oh, wow. Oh, my. Oh, wow. look at this. Oh, well, I know dinner is ready shortly so i guess i should only have a small one so shall we try this one in the corner look how easy 
that the um, it peels off, just lift straight off like this. It does feel a little bit greasy, I have yeah, to say. Gosh. Um, let's let's try it. Oh my god! Oh my god! Mm. What is in this again? Mm. So oh we've god. got New Zealand butter. Mm. We have got caramel condensed Ugh. milk. Ugh. Mm. Oh god, no. Mm. Desiccated coconut. No. Mm -hmm. And then we melted a whole bar of Cadbury caramel all over the top. And you know something? It's not overly sweet. It's not. Oh, jeez. I mean, it's just the... It seems sweet. The whole combination of the ingredients, but... Mmm. Oh gosh, I don't think I could eat more than one of these. In fact, I don't think I could have more than half of mm, one. I would say it's probably better to cut them again. We're just going to have to find some friends <laughs> to help us eat these because I, I eat all that on my own. Oh dear. That I is be quite a lot. But... Oh wow, that's just so good. But look, look how greasy. Oh jeez, I, I can't. But I reckon, mm. if it's left in the fridge even longer. In fact, what you can do <laughs> is once you cut them to the size you want really, is then just put them into a Tupperware and put them into the fridge and they'll keep. Oh, all right. You sure you don't want one? No, I don't. Mm. I'm not feeling the sweet tooth mm. at the moment. You oh, savor God. this. Oh, go on. Are you going to have more? No. <laughs> oh. All right. <laughs> Well, I hope that you have enjoyed seeing the New Zealand flag Aww. behind us during these three episodes. And there is a flag going to appear again in a moment in one of our tips and tricks about staying in New Zealand. And what is it today, Paul? Always, always, always wear sunscreen and always bring a cap. Or buy a cap, which I did. So Me too. I think I've... I've got to wear it again. It's the first time I've worn it since we came back. And I really love this cap. And a lady in a shop even complimented me on it. And this actually leads in to the next segment very well because both these caps came from our number one place to visit while you're in New Zealand. But before we reveal that, and if you've read what's on Paul's cap, you'll know where it is already. Let us just recap on number three and two. So the number three place to visit for us when you're in the Auckland area was Mission Bay. And you can take the tour bus there from the CBD. And number two is Devonport, which you could go via the ferry or on the highway. And number one is Waiheke Island, and that is where we got these caps, and it's known as the Wine Island. So we will take a look in a moment, but what summed up Waiheke for you, Paul? Well, I burp. <laughs> it's the whiskey, it's the whiskey. I think maybe it was that shop, or maybe it was... Well, you got the hat, which you're not wearing now. Put your cap on, my dear. Maybe it was a shop that we bought this from the Waiheke Supply Company. Central Supply Company. Central Supply Company. Yeah. We did quite, we did buy quite a bit. We got some fantastic t-shirts there. But I just love the whole atmosphere of the place. And even though um, the wineries, they were, they were sort of semi-open. Because it was the off season. It was the off season. And we did go to the Heke Brewery and we had a beer there. 
Um, but it's just the whole atmosphere, the bus tour, the bus driver oh, was dear. fantastic. He was like, great at giving commentary. And we visited a couple of beaches. And what was the name of the main town where we got the cab? Oh, oh. I can't remember now. Oh, I think we'll just have to watch this to find out. <laughs> Bus driver said, this is one of Tangi. This is one of the best beaches on Waikiki Island. And I can see why. It's magnificent. Welcome to Wanatangi, the longest beach on Waikiki. You're on the northern coast of the forest heart of the Walk Waikiki Network. From here, you can either enjoy this splendid beach or traverse the island's green center linking to walks across the island. Are you going on the beach? Yes, I'm going on the beach. Jeez. Welcome to Wanatangi. Oh my God, isn't this fabulous? This is a paradise, for sure. It's an absolutely golden sand beach. The bus has dropped us off for just a few minutes, so let's take a quick look around. Well, it's warm to the touch, look at this. This is real golden sand here. Wow. This really does remind me of Port Stewart. Sand is rather soft. However, it does harden as you get further to the shoreline. Obviously with the tide, it has been here more recently than further back. Your time is up, Paul. Time to reboard. No, he'll remember you. We are at the highest winery in Waikiki. This is called the Batch Winery. Wow, so at altitude, cow. if you're drinking the wine, you'll get drunk pretty quick, I think. Faster because of the altitude, I guess. But there are some absolutely fantastic views from oh here. My Lord. And the driver on the bus was just saying that Seven you minutes. can see the, the CBD from here as well. So oh, wow. let's just have a look. We've just got off the bus at Onoroa and spotted a little shop that sold t-shirts, knickknacks and caps. Socks. Socks for Paul. And I thought, oh, I've, I've got to buy a cap because I didn't bring one with me because I thought, Why well, not? well, I thought the sun wasn't going to be strong enough or there wasn't even going to be any sunshine over here, but I've already burnt my head once. Me too. Yeah. And we are wearing sunscreen today, but I thought, you know, why don't I get a nice cap as well? Suits you. Thank you. Onoroa is one of the towns on Waiheke Island and it's where there are lots of restaurants, lots of shops and also a beach. It's just coming up to lunchtime so we are on the hunt for food and I think as we are so close to the sea it's got to be fish and chips or maybe... Oyster? Mm-hmm. Well, a lady in another shop has just complimented me on my cap and 
she asked where I got it and I said just in the shop down there she warned us though about the ozone layer here apparently it's quite thin so you do have to be extra careful which we weren't at the start the sun can be quite deceptive it is actually a quite strong today but even when it's cloudy you've got to be careful yep speaking of which ah look at this it may be windy but it actually feels quite nice i am wearing my puffer jacket but it does feel quite warm you can see the sea from here and there's a lovely little area just to sit with beautiful flowers. So we've been doing some shopping at the Waiheke Central Supply Company here in Onoroa. And Paul, you got a couple of pairs of shorts, didn't you? And a t-shirt. I got two t-shirts and you also got a cap and the guy was really helpful and told us about other things that we could see around here but the clothes are like really high quality when yeah. I put on the t-shirt to try it it just Which size I uh, will oh you we don't discuss sizes on this show Paul it just felt so soft well it, it just slid on the quality of it was fantastic it's like a pair of shoes ah yes perfectly fit indeed i really love this sculpture of the penguins taking a selfie and it is called selfie so it says selfie we're not locals but we think this is paradise there's golden sand aqua marine sea it may sound a little bit windy, but actually it's just a bit of a breeze. The water is relatively gentle. So what are you looking at, Paul? Okay, so the view from here is the northeast view over the Haraku Gulf, which shows the protection of the Great Barrier Island and the Karamanda Peninsula. It makes it such a sheltered marine playground. So it's basically like an enclosed little area maybe. The view is absolutely stunning. Hmm, time for lunch and I think we're going to go to the local which is a fish and chip shop. Well, I think I'm gonna go for the snapper and chips. It's a tiger beer batter. The local housemaid tartar with zesty slaw and lemon. What about you, Paul? Same? Same thing. And what are you drinking? Sparkling water. Ah, no alcohol. For no you. alcohol because I'm having some later. And look at the view we have got from our restaurant table. It's lovely. So this is battered snapper with fries, a nice little Ooh. salad. What is that? Oh, tartar. tartar sauce and, and a wedge of lemon. I thought that that was an orange. Oh, was it? <laughs> no, because it looks like an orange. It is actually, yeah. Well, I can't wait to tuck into this. What did you think of the snapper? Really good. It is better than the cod. Yeah, and the batter was really delicious as well. And you couldn't beat the view. And the uh, the guy in there was so helpful as well. He brought out this massive chart, which showed us where we were in relation to uh, Auckland. And also, he asked Barrier us, Island. yeah, the Great Barrier Island. He asked us, he said, what's that island over there? And it wasn't an island. It was part of the North Island. Great question. And yes. But it gave us a good idea of exactly where we were. Here's the Waiheke Community Notice Board. Let's see what is happening. Waiheke Comedy is presenting Butch Kennedy and the Surf Deal Kid, <laughs> a weekly improvised soap opera. That's interesting. Cirque Deceive You. Excellent. 
what's on at the cinema. Ooh, lots of films that I haven't heard of. Oh, well, there's Barbie and Oppenheimer, of course. Self-defense classes. Artworks theater. Drivers need it for Meals on Wheels. If you need some assistance or help, you could go to the Citizens Advice Bureau. A nice bench, look at this. For Terry Bull Comedy Club. We have got the Island Grocer over there. What do you think so far of Owenora? I love it. It's got such a villagey feel. It's, it's just so calming. spent quite a lot of money here haven't we? We've got lots of clothes and we've had our lunch and now we're going to take a walk down to the beach that you all have seen a little bit earlier. Uh, Paul, do you know what kind of tree that is? No. Me neither, I'm stumped as well. <laughs> I think I see berries on this tree, I wouldn't eat them though. A lot calmer now in among the trees and I hear the waves crashing. Yeah, I'm not looking forward to the walk up again. We're going to be walking Which back. we have to do because it's the only way down and the only way up. Oh, I think I'll need the seat on the way up. It's a zigzag path down to the beach. Wow, look at this. No, what's the easiest way down, do you think? I hear doggies barking. Just as before, the sand is pretty soft here. But then it does get harder as you walk out towards where the tide has come in. It's friend. Hello. <laughs> well, we're having to leave the beach now because we are on a very tight schedule. We are on the tour bus, of course, and there's only one every hour. So the next one is at 3.07, which is in about half an hour from now. But it's going to take us a while to walk back up that hill that we just came down to go to the beach. And our next stop is going to be one of the many wineries on the island. Well, we've just got off the tour bus again, and we are now at the Wild Estate, one of the wineries. Now, this one has got various activities outside, including archery. Mmm, something smells nice. And there is smoke coming out of the chimney. What do you think that is? Wood. Wood-fired wine? Maybe. Do you think this is just food? <laughs> the lady sat next to me on the bus. Did she say that she was car sick? Yeah, so then I was like, then why the hell are you sitting next to me? I thought she was gonna be sick. Well, it, no idea. Well, the guy at the Wild has said that if we want to have a look at the vines, we right. should walk between the wineries, which is what we're doing now. And we On should Pizza? end up at Hecke, Hecke, yeah. which is a brewery and also a whiskey distillery. But look at this. This is nice down here, too. The moat or yeah. the body of water. Uh huh. Easy seven minute stroll. Wow. I'm out of breath already though. Oh, look at this lovely little bridge. 
Oh yes. Welcome to Tantalus Estate. This is a working vineyard. So we have to walk towards the bell tower over here. Oh look, a little path has emerged. This is taking us through some marvelous gardens. Watch your step, Paul. It's now turned into like a gravel path. Wow, look how tropical it looks, Paul. Right? I've been to some zoos that look like this when you walk through their jungle area. And there are descriptions of some of the trees. This is the Kanuka, a white tea tree. If you need a rest, there are some chairs sitting out. What are these? These look like palm trees or something. Yeah, something like that. Like within or that some family. Some type of fern as well. This is definitely a fern here. Fancy going on the swing, Paul? Not at the moment. <laughs> and look, there's a wood burner over there. Maybe they make pizza outside. Is that traditional Maori poles over there? He said to head towards the clock tower, the bell tower. Oh my gosh. But we went down there instead. It was nice. Yeah. It looks like Heki is open. I hope so, because I need the toilet. Yeah. Oh. And it's rather difficult terrain around here. Look at this. You know what, Marcus? I think maybe this worked out for the best because I was in the mood for whiskey, maybe. Well, I can see the distillery uh -huh. ahead of us. Welcome to the Hecky. Thirsty Thursday. Well, it is Thursday, is it not, Paul? It is. In you go. Subscribe to It's Paul and Marcus on. Well, I just think there's just so much to see and do in New Zealand, and we only saw the tip of the iceberg, if you like, which I'm not saying it was cold, but we were in the north. And of course, the north in the southern hemisphere is the warmest part, unlike over here. So, you know, even though this is the last episode of these specials, we might do some more because there's a lot more to reveal and I think we might return to New Zealand one day and have a look at other parts of the country. And if you did like any of this and any of our future stuff, please hit the subscribe button because we do appreciate 
your support and we do also like your likes and comments as well so keep them coming so we'll say cheers and see you next time kia ora kia ora We hope that you enjoyed watching the show. Now, you didn't get to see all the friends that were made over in New Zealand. So here is Paul with a couple of extras. Where is the other one? Hey, wait, I'm a Kiwi too. What about the other one? Don't forget about me. Watch where you stick that. Ah, watch it.